CataractCoach.com, why did the nucleus drop? And when do you first notice signs of trouble? We have an anonymous resident who's operating this case. And you can see it's a pretty dense nucleus. Capsule has been stained with tripan blue dye. Now we know we're going to have a complication in this case where the nucleus is going to fall into the vitreous. And that's okay. Let me be the first to tell you, every single cataract surgeon in his or her career will certainly face a situation where the nucleus drops the vitreous. It's happened to me. It's happened to you. It's happened to all of us. And it's not always the surgeon's fault. You can have patients with weak tissues. We've shown you videos here in the past where patients had prior intravitreal injections which damaged their posterior lens capsule. And then during cataract surgery, there goes the nucleus. Now the key here is when the nucleus does start to drop in the vitreous cavity, let it go. It's okay. This is why we share the love and the liability with our vitreoretinal colleagues. So let's watch what happens here. A little bit of hydrodissection. Hard to see the fluid wave because the lens is pretty opaque. And looks reasonable. Let's see, does it spin? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Look at that gap being created there subincisionally. That's called weakening the zonger support. A little bit of hydrodissection. It looks like also a little bit of a golden ring of delineation. Here comes the phaco probe going inside the eye. And now cleaning up anterior cortex, but look how the whole lens is moving around. That rex, it shouldn't be moving so much, right? If the rex is moving, it means you have weak zonger support or issues with that. So now with this density of nucleus, you want to be able to make a groove, but use enough phaco energy so that the nucleus itself stays still. It doesn't move around. You're not pushing it around. And so let's see the groove going down here in the middle. And starting a groove. Look, a lot of leakage from the side port, by the way. Look at that second instrument. Oh, now look. Look at the rex's edge has moved that far. That's zonder stress, a tremendous amount of it. Oh, my goodness, stop what you're doing. That smoky look right there, that means you're not aspirating the pieces down. The, you're emulsifying lens material, but it's not aspirating down well. So this groove needs to be longer and le less deep. Make each pass shallower. Think of it like you're scooping really hard, deeply frozen ice cream. If you try to scoop it with your spoon too deeply, you bend the spoon. You need to do a shallower scoop with the ice cream with your spoon. And same with this, with a denser nucleus, if you're not using more power, you need to do shallower passes. This is a little iffy there. It's too deep in the middle and not enough length of that groove. Oh, what's that spot there? Look at that spot. Full thickness defect. Faco needle has gone through the posterior plate of the nucleus. Now you're in trouble. Well, what would I do right now? If I was attending this case, if I was assisting this resident, I would say, stop making the groove. Just stop. We're going to get the nucleus up out of the bag. You've already violated the posterior capsule. Why do you keep going in that one spot to make the posterior capsule defect even larger? No. I would convert to MSICS. Wow, wow, wow. Look at that full thickness groove. You have gone all the way through. So that's the posterior capsule break. Now you see it. Forgive the upside down text. The video was submitted to me originally in the non-surgeon view. And you like to see this view with the FACO probe right in front of you as if you're operating. So I flipped the video around. So I wouldn't split the nucleus here. Nope. I'd bring the nucleus up into the anterior chamber, use a chopper, pull it out of the capsule bag. If you do want to split it in the eye, fine, make it in two halves, but you need to convert to a manual extraction here. This is going to go south. The more you manipulate here, that small little defect in the posterior capsule has now zipped around and it's got a huge, wide open defect. Let's pause the video here for a second and think, hmm, what's gonna happen next? There it goes. Watch carefully. The whole nucleus now is going to fall into the vitreous cavity. Well, you didn't need to pull the phaco probe out, but I do agree. Let it go. It's okay. Your vitreoretinal sur surgery colleagues are going to go in there, do a full parts plane of vitrectomy, full parts plane lensectomy. It'll be fine. The patient will have a good outcome. There's no legal, medical legal liability in having this complication. It happens to every surgeon in his or her career. But you want to make sure you do the right thing. Do not fish for it with the phaco probe. It's already gone. Accept reality. Let it go. Now what should you do? 
Let's clean up the front of the eye. So at this point, yep, a little bit of sweep there. You may want to put some triumphs in loan to stay in the vitreous. Probably going to have to do some sort of anterior vitrectomy. Yeah, close up the eye. I agree. Put a suture in that main incision. Now, should you leave the patient a fake or put a lens in? Either's okay. But if you're sending your patient to a trusted vitreal colleague, that colleague can do the vitrectomy, lensectomy, and put the lens in for you. It's better to do no harm. So closing this up, I like the idea of placing a suture. And then it's okay to send the patient a fake to the retina colleague who will then help you out and contain this case. So a very important learning here. And remember, this complication happens to all of us. You just have to realize how to manage it. So at this point, your choice is to finish up and do a bimanual antivitrectomy, or you can just let the retina surgeon clean up everything. Thanks for watching.